<clears throat> Here I am. As I said I would be. Sorry it's a bit late in the day, but I had a lot going on. But MLW Fusion, as you can see, MLW Fusion, episode 162. I decided to check out MLW Fusion. Hopefully next time I'll be able to check out NWA. Haven't had a chance to see it. But what did I think of this show? I'm not doing a view. Making it clear right now. This is just my thoughts on the show. What did I see? Did I think there's any improvement? Did anything look interesting that may make me want to start trying to do reviews of it? And decide, do I want to let go of what's going on with WWE? That, that's what this is coming down to. Well, I saw the middleweight match. Seeing El Dorado win the middleweight title was good. But here's a problem for me, which makes me think they haven't really improved that much. If you watch that match with him and Skywalker, tell me the last 20 seconds of that match. His music didn't start playing for no apparent reason other than some moron, I'm going to call them a moron, decided to start playing his music early because they knew he was going to win. Now, whether it was fed to the venue and the crowd, or it went through the mics with Matt Stryker and the guy he's working with, it don't mean shit. You do not play a wrestler's music before they win the damn match, especially with a damn title in, in especially in damn title in play. That was fucking stupid. I don't care who it was, whoever it was, whether it was Durant, whether it was someone in the back, that was plain stupid. Unless you're going to do an actual angle and say that this is part of an angle because after it was over, what did we get? Caesar Durant coming out and bringing on a bottle of champagne, handing it to him and saying we need to talk. That's not part of it. It is obvious some moron fucked up and played Dor Dorado's music early because they were stupid. That was dumb. The six-man tag. It was all right. The Burlington... You guys can tell me below if anyone's watched this. The Burlington Bulldogs are those a mix between Davy Boy Smith's grandson and Dynamite Kid's grandson. Because one's 20, one's 19. I don't know. I don't think they're Davy Boy Smith Jr.'s sons. I could be wrong. I don't know. You guys can tell me below. They could be, but if they're not, I don't know. One of them looks like Dynamite Kid. Let's let's make it honest. That kid is a damn striking resemblance to his grandfather. That is Dynamite Kid's son. Not Davy Boy Smith. Dynamite Kid. That kid looks just like his dad, granddad. He looks just like him, just skinnier and smaller. At least right now. I think he's 19, maybe 20. He's still got time to develop. But damn, he looks just like him. But I don't know about the other one. Could that be Davy Boy Smith Jr.'s own son? Could they both be his sons? Because I think Dynamite Kid had had a daughter. So maybe Davy Boy Smith married her. So it's a possibility that Davy Boy Smith's son and Dynamite Kid's daughter actually had kids. I don't know. You guys, you guys can tell me below. I don't keep up with it. But it was interesting to see the dynamic between them and the club. I can't remember the um, the name of the fight club. But it was interesting. Was also the segments good? Was the camera work good? Was the lighting good? Was the backstage segments good? Here's the problem. See the um, Duran is not that great of an actor. He sucks. I'm sorry. Whether it's due to the fact of him wanting to be in this or the creator believes that he's better off being a part of it, I don't think he should be in it unless it's absolutely necessary because he had too many segments throughout the entire show. I know it's because he's come back, I understand that's what they said after being away and now he's going to control all the luchadors and particularly Tyre Valkyrie, who's not a featherweight champion where I don't understand why the blue fuck they never had a woman's title until last year. 
whether you're talking about the old MLW from the mid 2000s and the current one, I believe was from 2015 or 16 when they restarted it again, it makes no damn difference. There should have been women wrestling for damn title in both versions. Both versions, that's dumb. But, seeing as Ty is there as a featherweight champion, I'm fine with, and I'm sure many people will say, well, the reason she's there is because she's worked with Durant before over at Lucha Underground. Fine, I don't care. Just book the women and make them mean something. I'm just saying. The lighting seemed to be a fine. I'm fine with the lighting around the ring. But they just made the same mistake as Impact Wrestling. You don't fucking see the people in the arena, even if it's fucking packed. Look, I don't understand why they're so damn scared since the time of the pandemic. I can understand. You don't want people to see there's barely anyone there. It takes away from the immersion. But this is now three years in. And there are people there. Some wearing masks, some not. Now, I don't think the place was totally empty. I'm sure it was at least halfway to nearly packed. Why not show them? So people at home who pay for the app to be able to watch you get the immersion. I don't understand why Impact and MLW still have this stupid mentality. It's stupid. Camera work. This is only for this show. Unless I see more of this, I cannot say it is better than Impact. But I will say, was this better than what I've seen previously from all those times? Yes. I'm saying it right now. Their camera work here had some spots where it's messed up. That's, let's be honest. No camera work on any promotion is perfect. And I always say that. But you must at least 70 to 80% of the time be able to see what's in the ring. Not be like Vince McMahon that wants it like this. Or now Impact Wrestling that will do it like this and keep it like this. And you'll either see her back or you'll see their ass or you'll miss the entire thing because they're zoomed in so close. The person moves out of frame so quick, the person that is working the hard cam can't keep up with it because they're being told to zoom in really quick, really close, and they can't zoom out in time to be able to catch the, the stuff. The two cameramen or camera women, counting if there's any women, at both sides of the ring who have been told the same thing, zoom in as close as possible to make it as cinematic and as immersive as possible, but it doesn't work that way because they need to be able to see what's in the ring so people at home can understand. Doing it cinematic doesn't work. So I will say on this episode, I will need to see multiple episodes, at least five or six, to see how the style of the cinematics are. If you think that I'm chewing them out, I'm not. It's the same thing with Impact Wrestling, AEW, and WWE, even NWA. At one point was doing the same stupid thing. They were not really zoomed out like this. They had this because they wanted to be like a WWE. The most stupidest thing that people at home can't watch. Nobody wants to watch a show that you can't see anything but a person's ass or their damn back or their damn face. Nobody wants it. So I don't understand why people keep doing it. But I will say MLW, they didn't do like they used to. They're not so zoomed in. So they seem to be more relaxed. They want people to see what's going on. Did they botch a little bit? Yeah, but it's all right. When it comes to the commentary, I don't know the other guy, but I recognize Matt. Matt has always been hit and miss when it comes to his excitement. And when he was in Impact, he was not that exciting. He was really didn't seem to be 100% happy there. Didn't seem to be. But here he sounded all right. Sound fine. Lighting was fine other than not being able to see the fans. Camera work was pretty decent to fine. Backstage segments were pretty good, except for when it came to Caesar Dur Durant. I really don't believe he should be shown much. But if it's part of a storyline, that's a prevalent one. I can understand what is there. But if he's not, he really needs not to be seen. So I will tell you this. What was the most interesting thing and the most biggest botch was the middleweight match. 
That was very interesting. But the botch, 24 seconds before it was over, Dorado's music plays, so it's obvious that he was going to win. Either it was for the commentary team or the people in the arena, they got to hear already something that shouldn't have been heard. So I will say this was an okay show. I cannot tell you that this is a spectacular co I know some of the people have been wanting me to do more reviews, particularly one who's been wanting me to do MLW, is going to say, see, it's awesome. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm sorry, dude. I know you want me to agree and want to see MLW's great now. I'm not going to do that. I am a long-term reviewer. I'm not just going to jump down, jump on the bandwagon of something. I want you guys to know I'm giving you quality. I may botch a lot. I may spit on my, my, my lens once in a while. I may forget things, but I try my best to give you a fair assessment of a promotion from its storylines, the lighting, from the audio work, from the camera work, from the presentation of where they are in the venue. One of the things that MLW has an issue with where they are now, they don't have that many mats on the ground. They like to show almost no mats. But then the problem is if the venue or arena they're in is nothing but crap, what do you got on the floor? Look what the floor look like shit. It's one of the things that I can agree when it comes to AEW, WWE, when it comes to at least NWA is in the same place where the floor is solid concrete and polished. So nothing looks different. It looks clean. So it, it doesn't have an issue. But when it comes to MLW, wherever they're working, that floor looks like shit. So they have to do something about making the venue look good. The floor needs to be dealt with. Mats need to be put down or some type of fabric to cover it. So no one's going to see how crappy the floor looks. Because that's a presentation. That is something that a promotion and a promoter should understand. That you're not... Catering just to the people in the fucking venue and arena. You're also, can, you're also catering to someone like me who can't go there because they live in another part of the world or the country. And I want to see what's going on except I will see like a crappy floor. People care about that kind of stuff. For me personally, it's a crappy floor, but I've seen worse. So it doesn't bother me much. But I'm going by what other people are going to see. And if they get themselves a really good TV deal or a network, do you actually think people are going to actually want to watch something that looks like crap? If the lights look like crap, you can't hear anything, you can't see anything, the backstage segments is crap. Do you actually think anyone's going to watch them? No, they've got to polish it. So I will say for this one episode, it looked okay. But I'll need to see multiple episodes before I can tell you, one, that I may do review of it, and two... Do they need improvement? Which probably they do. Hope you enjoy this. Peace.